the queen talks a little bit with Kip, and then she uh, sits down in the chair at, at, at kind of like at the head of the circle where you guys are sitting. And she is quiet for a while, and then she says, This could not have come at a worse time. If what you say is true, if the demons are seeking to conquer everyone, and if they are as powerful as you say, then this kingdom, the Alonsi Forest, can't stand against them alone. Mm -hmm. And then she says, What are your thoughts after delivering your people here? Well, immediate ones would be traveling south to... Neil glances over at Kip. <laughs> Help with other medias. And Kip pipes up. They're going to save my mom and the other black dragons. The demons are going to use them. And with that, her eyes, her eyes widen and she says, The demons are seeking to ally themselves with the dragons? Well, from what we heard, it's more of a hostile takeover, but... Yeah. She in slave type of thing. She shakes her head and then she looks at Jarek and she says, you were right when you said they were planning well. If they get the help of the dragons, willingly or not, things could get much worse. Jarek does not like to hear the concept that he will have to go across the sea on a ship to an island that he has no feelings for <laughs> to save a bunch of dragons who might very well eat him. She, uh, uh, <laughs> after, after a few seconds, she says, but that's not the only concerns we have. If the Freelance have fallen and the demons run unopposed, we have no idea of knowing who they're attacking or where they're going. More importantly... Oh, go ahead. So far, the only places that we've seen while we were fleeing um, was they were going to the east towards Colhaven and to the south. She, again, shakes her head. I am, to be blunt, new to politics. I've only been queen for three years, and as you all can see, I'm rather young. But I have a head enough. I have a strong enough head around things to understand that the world is not in a position to unite. High elves are constantly at my door, waiting for me to make a mistake so that they can reclaim my land. Colhaven. She pauses. I can't be certain of it, and my advisors disagree. But I think maybe in a state of civil war or soon be. And the dwarves, well. The dwarves, as polite as they are, have never really been incredibly happy to help other nations when it came to war. She says, after a while, she's... She, oh, go ahead. You, if I understand correctly, you want our help in order to solidify a strong front to oppose these demons, correct? She, she thinks about it for a while and she says, I hadn't even begun thinking of what to do. But it is clear that if they're as strong as you say, we will need to have alliances. And Lady Celine was the best bet to get that. True. Inferno? <sighs> Are you there? Inferno! Uh -huh. Uh, Inferno. Oh, yeah, I'm here. Can you, you, oh, you cut out. You cut out. Hello? You cut yeah, out. Yeah. So. Yeah. Oh God. Yeah, All right. Out. Yeah, my Skype just take up like a mofo. Sorry. Yeah. Man. yeah I'm there. Fine. Yeah. No worries. Um. So the last thing I heard, I heard was, uh, Lady Celine was their best chance of getting that. Correct. Yeah. Right. That was it. Okay. Okay. And Kellamore's going to say, as. Our companion here, Jarek, played that message from the messenger, the game master, to the Lich King. There is a way to defeat this, this threat. The only question is, is we do not know where this demon lord is or where these champions, these players are. 
if we're able to find one of the surviving players and convince them to use one of these gems against the demon lord, we could end this right now. I don't suppose you would have any information on that, or could you use your resources to assist us in that, in locating, uh, at the very least, the demon lord itself? She kind of steeples her fingers and puts them under her chin. She says, considering I was about to ask you the same question, I'm guessing I won't be as much help as you were hoping. I neither know who these champions are, where I could find them, and quite likely if the attack originated in Whitebridge, as you suggested, they may already be dead. How about this? We do have a few leads on who these people might be. Perhaps we can share the burden. If we agree to do our absolute best, use our cunning to find and track down these players, perhaps you could use your resources to find out if these demons are attacking in any sort of organized way or where their central location might be. She nods and she says part of that will be happening anyway i will direct whatever forces i can to acquire as much information as i can but these players you're right they may be the key to all this however if we find them and if we find the stones and if they will help us we still have to find a way to get them to this azil that is true but i suppose one step at a time is finding a zeal and finding the players. I suppose I have a question for you. Uh, my, well, not my queen, but your, your, your honor, your in, honor. In private, Leowen mm-hmm. will do. <clears throat> Very well, Leowen. I can imagine there are many people who would be very upset at these individuals, these players who purposefully or not, brought these demons into this world. It was clear that by the message they were tricked, but they might be so well hidden because they fear for their lives. Would they find safe haven here if we were to use them as a proper tool to end this invasion? She thinks quietly and she says, from what I understand of the message, it was no fault of their own. However, I do understand that people can be prone to hysterics and they like to point fingers even when blame isn't warranted. I would offer protection if you can find them and bring them here. However, I suggest that the message and the fact of who they are do not leave this room. Agreed. The less people who know, the better. However... She pauses. If that is truly your intent, I will not stop you, but there may be more helpful things that you can do. Lady Selene and the Freelands as a whole were, how would you say, the glue that held all the diplomacy together. Everyone cared what the Freelands thought, and thus everyone cared what Lady Selene thought. If I were to send diplomats to the other countries requesting alliances, they would laugh at me and my diplomats. If Lady Selene were to go, it wouldn't be much of a question. However, as you can see, that's not really the case. If Lady Selene's champions were to go in her stead, you might stand a better chance forming these alliances than I would have no chance of forming. None of us are diplomats by a long shot. She nods and she agrees and she says, but, and she looks around, we don't seem to have any diplomats from Whitebridge to use. I see. Well, among the group that we travel with, I recognized a diplomat native to Coalhaven. Jarek like is like like lifting one of his gloved hands and like rubbing the back of his neck. Like, oh god, damn it. She goes, <laughs> ah, yes, Colhaven. Perhaps it might be best to give you some more knowledge of where the different countries stand. Colhaven is going to be a challenge at the best of times. 
I'm, I'm sure you're aware your king on a good day is stubborn. He is, in my opinion, sometimes an old fool, but at least he was a strong old fool. Unfortunately, and she sighs, she says, there is a fort at the bottom of Coalhaven called Fort Vigilant, which no one has heard anything from in months. Now, if it were attacked or overrun or overtaken by something, then the king assuredly would have sent an army to find out. And one way or the other, we would have information of what's taking place there. The fact that there is no information coming from the, the fort whatsoever leads me to believe that the king himself doesn't want us to know what's taking place there, which leads me to one conclusion. Whatever's happening there is mutiny. I know it's just a hunch, but I fear that Colhaven may be suffering from a civil war. Jarek, you know, defensive, like, his, his whole life, like, Fort Vigilant's pretty far and didn't seem to be that major. Perhaps this, your informants are more concerned with other matters? She raises an eyebrow and then says, Fort Vigilant can't be that unimportant when it's where the king's own son is stationed. <laughs> Jared doesn't hate the hates logic whenever it's used by other people. <laughs> Jared, like, ah, visibly, ah visibly, see like, how you like it, Norm. Jared like visibly grimaces, <laughs> like you know, like actually loses the poker face, like oh, you can't, <laughs> and then quickly recomposes his face. She she says, "Of course, Colhaven would be a great ally, but obviously, we'd need to make sure that." Um... And then she pauses. Well. If there is a civil war, I don't know how quick they would be to join us until it's settled. And then, of course, you have the High Elves, she says in a bit of disdain. The present company accepted, she says to Finn. The High Elves would rather stab themselves in the foot than to ally with us. In fact, I fear if I send my army anywhere to fight these demons, I will find a High Elven army knocking at my door. There is... I would forget them completely, except for the simple fact that if these demons are as smart as you say and are seeking alliances with the dragons, who else are they seeking alliances with? If they have an alliance with the Lich King, who's to say they're not seeking alliances elsewhere? I have some personal confirmation on the veracity of the Lich King and Demonic Alliance. <clears throat> awkward like phrasing Jarek like ends it the sentence like flat <laughs> her, her, her face darkens and she says I don't I don't believe Colhaven the dwarves would ally with the demons but I can't know for sure the high elves I would like to think they wouldn't but high elves are commonly persuaded by common things or by shiny things. She says a little disdainly. She says, I'm being too unkind. Uh, yes? <clears throat> Sorry. Cullimore speaks up. I don't know much about international politics, nor do I know much about the relations between you and the High Elves, but it is clear there is bad blood. I have been in situations where groups of individuals sincerely and completely hate the other group. However, Another threat moves into the neighborhood, and they don't necessarily become allies. They don't necessarily become best friends, but they both agree that the greater threat is bigger than both of them, and the only way to fight, the only way to stop it, is to fight at least on the same side. At least both agree to stop fighting each other and to fight it instead. We don't need to have a long-lasting alliance with these people. We just need to convince them that attacking these Azale, sorry, it is Azale, right? Azale, yeah. yeah. Attacking Azale's forces is in everyone's interest. Once the demons are dead, then you can settle back to your old beefs. She nods and she mm -hmm. says, what you speak is wise. However, in your experience, is it not also true that if the new group that were to come in were to get the ear of one of the groups first and persuade them 
the exact same thing was in their best interest. Yes. Then it's very simple. We make a better offer. Yes, I agree. Unfortunately, again, she spreads her arms wide. My people cannot put forth that offer. Fair enough. She, so she, she taps her finger on her nose for a second and then says, The orcs might be willing to help. They always were for a good fight. However, if the Lich King truly is allied with them, I think they might have their hands full. The dwarves... Well, who knows what the dwarves are thinking. And then she pauses. She goes, There is another possibility. Mm-hmm. I can't necessarily send my forces out of the Alonacy Forest unless we have an alliance with the High Elves. Or there's another force here to protect me. And then she pauses again. Perhaps it's time the last of our race come back home. If and who world, is that? If the world is truly in danger, it might be worth seeking the help of the drow. That's what I thought. Derek doesn't yep. like where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> this is going to be interesting. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, May, is it? Mm -hmm. Oh, sorry. Uh, go was, ahead. She's gonna say, unfortunately, it's been so long since anyone has seen the drow or know anything of them that <laughs> we most likely would be killed on sight. A Kalmore pauses for a moment, and he says, "With all due respect, may I be excused from this uh, little informal meeting? There's someone I think you should meet." She raises if, her eyebrows. With your permission, surprise. I'll go fetch him. She says, "Yes, uh, of course, if you feel it's best." Okay. Uh, and she Pierce waves. gonna leave, and he's gonna get Enadik. <laughs> yep. <laughs> get Mean who's cashing in on that favor? <laughs> <laughs> Me. <laughs> Me right. Meanwhile, uh, Cole is actually going to ask her a small question. Um, what is your feelings on the? Um, creatures that inhabit the forest. She looks at him, but she she cocks her head and says, "How do you mean?" Well, do you have? Do you feel that it is your territory, and these are beings that are uh, more of a hindrance than others? Ah. Uh. For the most part, we wood elves live in harmony with the creatures of the Alonacy Forest. The few that are not fond of us are small enough in number that they don't pose any large threat to us as a society. We lose a few wood elves every year to the Dizians of the forest, but for the most part they are an annoyance, not a threat. Hmm. And we'll leave it off that. <laughs> All right. Um, so, uh, so I guess uh, she would make small talk with you guys while Pearson's gone. Um, ask uh, uh, how you came to know Lady Celine, and and um, that I guess you guys can decide. Do you want to be honest with that, or what do, would you want to tell her about that? Jarek leaves all small talk matters to people who are not Jarek. Got it. Jarek doesn't do small talk. <laughs> he does big talk because he's a big man. Does big boy talk? Yes. That's right. Uh, are Are you gonna say anything, Cole? Um. Hmm. Uh, he would probably uh, not really say too much about that. <laughs> um, it's it's oh, more right. of like a it kind of happened more than anything else. Um, all right. Uh, then she will nod politely. Obvious. Uh, she she gives the look that she kind of knows that not everything's being told, but she's also not pressing. Um, I I was gonna go through oh. the entire story. Well then, go through the okay. Never mind then. She gives no such look because she's too busy listening to the entire story. Yeah, and I, I'm going to start when Keen actually gets to Whitebridge and starts becoming a bounty hunter there, and then from then on uh, until Colmore gets back, 
he is going to just continue on with the story. Actually, um, at some point before Coloma gets back, you hear um, some clamor outside of you shouldn't be here, you need to rest. And um, in the door floats, because her legs are kind of useless at the moment, um, a slightly better looking but very, very tired Lady Celine, followed by a slew of elven attendants and doctors fussing that she should not be moving. Our oh. two meal tickets will now fight oh, hey. to the death. <laughs> <laughs> no, they'll become an no, epic no. meal ticket. They'll become a meal plan. <laughs> I don't know. A meal voucher. plan? What am I in college? It will be a meal <laughs> voucher. <laughs> meal a meal voucher. voucher? No, it got me more. You got to Never mind. Yeah. Uh, she, uh, <laughs> uh, laminated. Lady Celine will look at uh, Leowen and, and say in a very friendly manner, Leowen, can you tell the vultures to go away? I'm quite all right. And then with that, she will sink into a chair with as much dignity as she can looking the way she does. Uh, and Leowen will wave off the attendants and say, are you well? To which Lady Celine will raise an eyebrow and go, really? <laughs> Do I look well? And uh, with that, Leowen actually giggles a little bit. And then Lady Celine looks at you guys and says, suddenly a little worried, where's Pearson? Is he okay? No, 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 no. He's fine. He's fine. He's getting a um, friend of ours. He will be back shortly. She nods and she says, and the rest of the people we let out of the city? Um, they are actually camping in the lower parts of the, the tower. Jared will say, not all of them survive the journey. Wounds sustained uh, before the escape. Some succumbed. But, yes, uh, unfortunately. But most of them? Yes, Most along. Uh, you, you guys know five people. You and, lost five it, people. It, along it, the way. Yeah, and and Jericho will actually offer a genuine smile, and since he knows how Lady Celine's like, I'll touch you, feel like extend a hand over to her chair to like place on like on top of her, and it will be much good for them to see you once more. And with that, she kind of sighs in such a way that it releases a lot of her tension, and she goes. And she kind of leans back and closes her eyes and says, then I am greatly in your debt. Mm -hmm. And then, oh, oh, Also, yeah. Lady Selene, we ended up stopping by fields and um, saving the halflings that were inhabiting there as well. She nods. And then all of a sudden her eyes pop open and she lifts her head up and stares directly at Kip as if she noticed but didn't recognize. <laughs> <laughs> like it just like, oh, yeah. snapped yeah. and she's like, Oh, I see you've picked up a new friend. Yeah. Jarek will pull back his hand and retreat back to the chair. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, meet Kip. <laughs> Kip will be like, hi. And Lady Sin's like, hello. Kip <laughs> thinks we're all elven females. Yes. And Lady Celine also looks poops down. Everywhere. Lady Celine looks down and says, "Were it that that were true, <laughs> I'm sorry. I must have missed so much. There is a dragon here." Yes. Um. Eventually, when everybody's all situated and we felt that everybody was safe, um, we were going to go to the Isles to the south of uh, Colhaven where the black dragons are actually being sieged by the, the demons who are trying to take take them by force and enslave them, I think, so that they will um, help the demons to basically conquer the world. In a conspiratorial voice, Jarek says, This dragon personally hunted for Keen Stormsire. Yes. She raises an eyebrow and looks at Keen. Really? You remember that ring that I showed you? Oh, I remember. Yes, that was uh, my engagement ring that I gave to my fiance before she left. Um, she is a priestess of the Black Dragons. And she told this, or, well, this one's mother told him to find me because I'm a friend of hers. With that, Lady Celine just kind of uh, 
leans her head back again into, into the back of the chair and says, wonders within wonders within wonders. Right. <laughs> and with that, Pearson comes back. Mm -hmm. I would have liked to actually just have a brief discussion. Oh, yes, yes. I'm sorry. Yes, by all means. Let's, let's switch over to you. If then. That's cool. Yeah, let's switch over just to you. That's actually Just explaining why important. I'm getting him. Yeah. No problem. I, no, it was just. There's just a fun little line I wanted to say. Uh huh. Just explain to Andik that, you know, with just like any bullshit politics, it's not what you can do, it's who you are and who you know. Right. And Adik, I think it's time that it might be time to turn in that favor. But don't worry, it's for the good of everyone, I reckon. And Adik, like, looks at you and he's like, What could you possibly need from me? Oh, you know what? I'm there and you can be yourself. We'll take it from there, okay? <laughs> and he follows you, but he's very apprehensive at those last words. <laughs> Don't Just worry. Be yourself. Don't worry, you won't be hurt. <laughs> Just be yourself. That'll be all good. Oh, okay. no, really? All right, so yeah, yeah, we'll enter. We can enter okay. now. With this uh, you enter the looking. room and see everyone mm -hmm. largely where they were when they left, except a very, still very damaged. Uh, her her legs are, um, and she's making no no move to really cover them, but her legs are still charred. And, and burnt. Um, her her face looks a little better. She looks like she's received some healing, but uh, mm. uh, Lady Celine is slouched back in the chair with her with her head leaned back and her eyes closed when you come in. <laughs> okay. Colomore will notice Lady Celine, notice that she's conscious, and give a mm, just appreciative nod her way. Uh, before just quickly surveying her wounds, but there's a little bit of business at hand. Uh, go ahead. What, no, what J J Jared, you know, seeing as how I, he was absent for the whole, like, drow thing, you know, he's gonna, like, look bewildered between, like, clean Finn and, like, evil Finn. <laughs> like, <laughs> like, he's not gonna fire in his brain, even with his vaunted intelligence, he's gonna basically, like, 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 it's not even like a poker face, it's just like a blank face, where he's like, faces out like, what? <laughs> <laughs> when you walk Cole in... Cole is actually going to think it's like, is a skeleton? Why are we bringing a skeleton? <laughs> <laughs> when, you, when you walk in, Lady Celine looks at you and smiles and says, Ah, Pearson, it always feels like there's a lack of necessary hostility when you're not around. Yeah, well... <laughs> I got good news. Some more might just crop right up in just a moment. Uh, as you can uh, see, this is clearly not uh, a twin. This is our <clears throat> acquaintance, Anadik. Anadik, if you would remove the ring. Anadik looks at you with the widest eyes ever. And that's the Elfin Queen. Yeah, I know. I'm We're going to... We're gonna. She will not hurt you. You are going to be our our favor. Will be you helping forging an age old alliance. With that, his eyes impossibly seem to get even wider, <laughs> and he very slowly <laughs> takes off the ring, revealing that his drow heritage. And at that, uh, Lady Celine obviously makes no movement, but. Uh, Queen Leowen actually lets out an audible gasp. Mm hmm. And uh, Kip just kind of looks at him. <laughs> so, tell us more about these old. What, what did you re refer to it as? Uh, long lost brothers and sisters? Uh, Queen Leowen nods and says. I was thinking that if we truly needed all the strength and support we could get, that perhaps it would be time to welcome our drow brethren back on this side of the mountains. And I was just telling our friends here that we had no way of contacting the drow because it had been so long since anyone had seen them. And at that point, Annalise, like, holding up his hands like excuse me like I don't want any part of this and he's like oh no you yes. want me to go back yep I sure do and he looks he, he squares on Pearson and says did it ever occur to you that there's a reason why I left mm, yes I, I it did occur to me but as a man as resourceful as yourself I mean 
You could be famous by the end of this. All things maybe could be forgiven. What have you possibly done to make you unable to return? He laughs unhumorlessly and then just says to himself, My mother always told me not to offer my help or make promises. You truly intend to make this the favor. I truly do. We spared your life for doing something not very wise. It's time for you to pay back the favor. He shakes his head and pinches his nose between his finger and thumb and says, Fine. I know where to find the drow. They may even listen to me. But Mm. they certainly aren't going to listen to me if I go by myself. And I'm certainly not going to face them by myself. And he looks back at Pearson and says, if you want the favor, you're coming with me. Mm, That can be arranged. Although, I think (laughs) I can't speak for my companions, but it's wise that we all stick together for other reasons. Just to know that you're willing to do so is good. We don't know exactly what route we will go just yet, but this has definitely opened up a few gates that were closed before. He says, oh, by all means, take your time. (laughs) Mm -hmm. But yes, and I do promise you, once this favor is done, we are square. 100%. In fact, by the end, I might owe you another favor. (laughs) <laughs> he he mutters to himself that once this is all done, they might all be dead, but he seems to be willing enough. Okay. And then he kind of just slinks into the back of the room while the rest of the conversation takes place. He's still there, but he's kind of yeah. wanting to be unseen. You know, if this were a TV show, this is when they would, like, break up the group and have their own little side adventures. Like, each episode would be their thing. But we don't do that because you never split the party. So yeah. I'm, not, I'm not doing that. Uh, I was thinking if this was a TV show, if this was a reality show, this would be the part where they show each person standing in the camera and, like, and Jarek's like, when they pulled the ring off the drow. <laughs> <laughs> I had to reboot. Yeah. But... Uh, <laughs> Jarek's like, you know, like Jarek doesn't have a solid state drive, so he's just now like getting to the desktop. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. So, Norton antivirus pops up, like, God damn it, close, close. You still run Norton? No, Jarek, I thought you were wise. <laughs> <laughs> so after that, a, a rather odd exchange takes place. Uh, Lady Celine starts talking, she says, The strength we're facing, we're going to have to try and get the alliances of the other nations. And Leowin says, Yes, I already said that. And she says, Coalhaven might be difficult. I fear there may be a civil war. And Leowin says, yes, I said that. And Leowin's oh like, well... Are these two sisters? <laughs> no, but you no. get the feeling that they know each other. Yeah, I'm getting that really strong. And, and, and then Lady Selene's like, well, we have to be careful with the High Elves. Yes, I said that. Has anybody mentioned the gnomes? No. And then they both stop and... Uh, were you saying this in character or not? Yes. Okay. They character. both stop and stare at you. Mm. And then Lady Celine says, No, I don't believe anyone has. And Leia Wynn says, The gnomes are even harder to get a hold of than the drow are. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I only, got, I only got one. I got no one else here. I'm not bringing in another Finian and <laughs> showing a gnome. I'm sorry. Jarek looks my... half expectantly at Colomore. Like, <laughs> Are you just gonna pull a gnome out of yes? I only got one miracle a day. I'm sorry. Aw. Yeah. Well, I can try to at least convince them that this might be good, even though they're in a fairly safe place. You know the gnomes? Well. You don't go a lot around in the Lassie Forest and never be found without being friends with the smaller towns. Ah, uh, yes, Queen Lewin says. I had heard that you were the mythical orc of the forest. Lady Celine Ryden's eyes, I hadn't. And she looks at Cole with interest. And then she says, uh, 
And then after a moment, Lady Selene throws her hands up and says, Well, of course. Of course you know gnomes, and you have a drow. And she looks at Jarek, and I half expect you to be the son of the frost giants. Can we get their help, too? We have a dragon. Well! <laughs> oh, and Lady Selene throws her hands up, mock, like, like, in good nature. But yes, who could forget the dragon? Master Keen can bring dragons to his beck and call. And, and then <laughs> Leo and... Yes. Yeah, oh, sorry, yes. I was going to say, Queen Leo when looks at Lady Selene and says, I, you didn't know any of this? And Lady Selene's like, no one tells me anything. <laughs> you were, you were unconscious for quite some yeah, time. You were, yeah. <laughs> However, this does bring up a point. This is a very, very rough outline and I am up for other suggestions. But it seems that right now the whole purpose of the attack on white bridge was to fracture our resolve i've seen it done before in other circumstances if a united front is brought to bear against this demonic army then perhaps its leadership will get frustrated and start a more organized path if they do that we might have a better chance at finding a zeal now, the best way to create an organized front is to gain such alliances. And my suggestion is to go with the easiest and most oppressive one, impressive ones first and have all the others fall in line. The dragons are a very, I feel, are a very big key. They are mythical, <laughs> mythical creatures. And if they were to fight with us or to assist us, or have or steal them at the very least away from these imps then that itself could be a motivating factor for the dwarves for the dark elves for even the high elves or even Culhaven and with all that together we can create that united front hell at that point we could probably just walk over to the lich king and go hey are are you are you sure you don't want to you know <laughs> So That's we have a very good point. Everybody else power, in the world. <laughs> if we have enough power, it's a big if, we could coerce the Lich King into telling us where Azeel actually lies. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Jared, is the like, Lich King not mortal? Can he not Jared, die? Derek like falls out of the chair. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Oh, I see we do have a critic here, Jarek. Please tell us the flaw in this idea. No, no, no. Lady Celine, with an amused smile, says, it would be difficult to convince the Lich King to do something he doesn't want to do, but not impossible, she looks at Jarek. You're right, perhaps my eyes are a little too big for my stomach. How about she, this? How about we she, unite okay. all the old gangs in Ardenfell and just worry about the Lich King later? She yeah. shakes her head and she says, No, actually, your words are very wise. I tend to agree. I somehow, sometimes, uh, I, part of me wonders if it's the best course of action, but it certainly makes sense. And you are right, it would certainly be easier to convince some of the shadier alliances, shall we say, or even, she pauses, obviously the demons aren't going to stand still. If they manage to convince some of the other nations to ally with them, having dragons on our side might be enough to shift them back onto our side. I think it's a brilliant idea. And... It would give me time to spread the word of Whitebridge's champions. Why would you need to do that? Lady Selene says, Well, of course, my dear Pearson. If you're going to be making mm. alliances in my stead, it helps if they've heard of you first. Wait, bro, oh. wait, wait, wait. Jerick starts laughing. Wait, wait, wait. You're better. <laughs> we, Lady Selene is better at representing the interests and desires of Lady Selene than... Five not diplomats are at representing the interests of Lady Celine. Lady Celine looked at you with an arched eyebrow and said, "Lady Celine almost killed herself trying to float two hundred feet to the chair. 
Lady Celine is not going anywhere for a very long time. Pearson wonders if we're going to continue to talk in third person. <laughs> <laughs> the Lady Celine then looks more seriously at her legs. She says, to be honest, I'm not even sure if I'll be going anywhere again. I, uh, had quite the number done on me. And, obviously, even if I could travel to these kingdoms, what kind of appearance would I give trying to negotiate deals looking like, and she kind of points to herself. I may have a lot of pull, but given my current condition, that pull would be better spent as the, how do I say, the voice behind more elegant and impressive champions. Uh, I spread the word that you are White Bridge's champions acting in my stead and of your deeds, which are several and impressive, and the other nations will be far more likely to pay attention to you when you talk. Considering how we are advertised as the champions of a city which I am sure currently lies in ruins in a land which is currently being assailed by demons, I hesitate to see the impact of that being anything positive. Oh, Jarek, 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 you're looking at it wrong. Politics is all about spinning. Yes, yeah. our city is in ruins, but you were the ones that fought your way out of it. <laughs> Jarek like friends the blue screen again like the computer in his mind slows <laughs> it's well Lady Celine says let me break this down perhaps because I'm seeing this in a different way what we need to do, need to do is to display power power to the people we want to sway to our side so some of that power involves being friends with the right people and some of that power is looking tough and some of that power is appearing to be tough. Getting friends is getting these alliances. Being tough is just being the badasses that we are. And looking tough is all this political crap. Lady Celine nods and says, Appearances are very powerful when it comes to diplomacy. And I know you don't like it, neither do I, but it's the truth. And the, we have the added advantage that in your cases, I don't even need to embellish that much. Right, but that is why you should select better individuals who are more capable of acting diplomatically, because I am certainly unqualified for this, nor do I even want it. She shakes I don't her head know. again. She shakes her head again and says, no, but you guys are perfectly qualified. I don't need dip diplomats who fawn and pray over kings and queens. I need, and she looks directly at Pearson, individuals who are willing to stand in front of the most powerful people in the world and tell them what needs to be done. That I can definitely do. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, uh -oh. she, Lady Celine says, I don't need politicians or diplomats. I need warriors and I need heroes. And right now, you're the best I've got. I don't see myself as much of a hero. Besides, what purpose do I have helping a kingdom which, by all intents and purposes, is threatening our non-existence? Lady Celine says, Oh, come, Jarek. You know as well as I do, we're not talking about saving Whitebridge. Whitebridge is gone. And she chokes up a little bit at that. We're talking about saving everyone, everywhere. That sounds like the responsibility in theater of people far more powerful and far more informed than I am. Jerk, how did you get anywhere in your life if you just were so goddamn apathetic? You clearly have passion for some things. Why don't you have passion for, I don't know, existing? Because this is beyond my scope. I wouldn't... You were, you talk about being an interrogator, correct? I have asked people questions on occasion. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. Your magic skills, correct? Uh, you, you, you did, did you, I have a question about you, just you in general. 
Did you come spurting from the wound, bloody and naked, knowing how to cast the spells you do, knowing the knowledge that's in your head, knowing to speak to people like you do? No. You learned it. Correct? It was beyond when you were just a little tiny man. The mysteries of magic were beyond your comprehension, correct? It was, it was way beyond your capacity, yet you still went for it. You still tried to achieve it. It was still a goal. This is a similar goal. You just have to have the balls willing to do it. So the question is, Jarek, do you have the balls willing to do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Queen Leowin says, Master Jarek, I think you're way too hard on yourself. You say that you're not cut out for this, but you walked right into my court and very elegantly and directly made waves. And if Lady Celine, if I'm understanding her correctly, is exactly what we need. Look, my concern is more with the Lich King than it is with the demons. The Lich King has been the ignored threat for so long that really no one has understood up to this point. That is... And this whole look, right? Jarek likes to like sputters out slowly. <laughs> it just like starts like gesturing with his hands, but no words are coming out. So really, I, I, I just hunt on dead. I, uh, and 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 Leowen <laughs> says, and rest assured, we will do everything in our power to find out the best actions to take against him. But this is something you can do now. Running off and fighting the Lich King by yourself may accomplish well nothing, but getting all of the nations to fight as one, that can defeat the Lich King, the demons, and everything else besides. You mm. may not like it, and Lady Celine's saying this, you, you may not like it, you may not agree with it, but the point is, none of us are in a position with the luxury to choose. We all, if we care about this world, our families, our connections, and looks at Jarek, and even our horse then we must do what is best for the world. And right now, this is what's best. Jerry's like, why'd you have to bring up Heinrich into this? I can't take him to the bottom of the sea. <sighs> <laughs> I just... Uh, go ahead. In, in my mind, it was just like, the world is grand, whatever. What about your horse? Horsey? <laughs> <laughs> That's horsey? what it is. Like, now yep. Pearson needs to fucking reboot. After all this conversation about all this shit, it's an appeal to his horse. Holy yep. shit. Lady Celine understands. Who is this That's fucking guy? Really <laughs> yeah, yeah. I've traveled no. with him for Did weeks upon weeks. I fought next to him like a brother. <laughs> Who the fuck is this? Man, I just I just want to point <laughs> out did see scatterbrain lady Celine able to pull the carpet out from everyone? <laughs> oh fuck you, Celine. You just got lucky. There it goes. Uh. Alright, uh, this will be provisional. I uh, well, because I for the same reason I accepted that stupid quest in white version is because being a professor to a bunch of aggravating students was pretty boring. So I went to Whitebridge. Exciting. And my life definitely got more exciting in Whitebridge, Lady Celine. <laughs> <laughs> Lady Celine will uh, will nod knowingly, and she says, and then she'll say, "I think the best course of action would be to take a day or two to rest, to gather yourselves, to get your family situated." She looks at Cole. I mean, at um, Pearson, huh? mm -hmm. and it'll give me the time to write uh, missives for you to take on your journey. Obviously, given the pressing time we have. You wouldn't want to come back here every single time you accomplish a goal or objective. So, I will send you with the full authority that I have to offer. You will officially be diplomats under mm, the under the flag of Whitebridge and the Freelands. With my, the when you speak, you will speak with my voice. Oh, wow. She says the only thing and is Cole. I like my voice. <laughs> Lady Celine, I guess with all the tension, will just laugh out loud <laughs> and say, Oh, Cole, dear, that's not what I meant. Good. My only curiosity is if there's a way for us to communicate with each other. Obviously, it would be good to be able to pick my brain 
when it comes to certain political situations. Is Miko with you? No, she is not. Jarek's mm. eyes narrow. By the way, um, I, I got word from Kriana. All you guys know is is Finn. All Finn says is that Mika's gone and she doesn't know where or how. If you press her, she says she'll try and come up with something. But that's all Finn gives. So for the moment, all you guys know is that Mika's just gone. I would not endeavor to ever use one of the tools of the very invasion to which we are going. Lady Celine says, I understand your concern, and I share it. My question was, if she was around, I would be able to use methods to determine how strong of a hold they have on her. If she's not around, then there's not much I can do. Last time, I, I think, was when, the, when we were in your palace before the rifts opened, and you were offering us another chance at guardering further and he like like demonstrates the gloves and I don't know. I don't know what happened. I don't keep track. But if I'd ever seen her Jerry you know, like like a menacing threat like underlays that statement. She nods and says, Well, if she's not here it can't be helped and perhaps it is for the best. We still need a way though. And she looks to Queen Leowen. Can you think of something? And Queen Leowen's like if you're going to be taking a few days, I can see if I can put something together. It wouldn't be ideal, but it'll be faster than carrier pigeons. Mm. What are you talking about? Lady Celine, uh, uh, they're talking about a way for you guys to yeah. be able to communicate at distance right. with Lady like Celine. Like, if we if we're in an yeah. entire different realm, like 100 or 200 miles away, it will take considerable time for any messages to be delivered. Therefore, the two uh, queens are consulting with one another about a means to allow more effective communication. And any magic that I could have access to would allow that would be available to like fucking level nine. So it's a bit so out of my league. Just, <laughs> so basically, basically, so that if you're if you're in negotiations with some country and someone throws you a curveball, you can hopefully say, uh, "Give me a second while I confer <laughs> with someone who knows this stuff." Um, I, I will say out of character, mm -hmm. um, I do have a magical fucking bird, so maybe she can do some kind of, you know, voodoo something to Jack? Jack's maybe only speak magical in the sense that he's intelligent and can talk. He can't teleport or fly or, no, or no, telepathically no. touch thinking... people. No, no, no. He has no she telepathic could... powers or anything, no. Okay. Uh, well, um, if... I don't think it's as immediate as mental transportation, but again, gnomes. They, I'm if I remember correctly, can literally teleport. We don't know, and even you don't know what they can and can't do. All you know is that they can move very quickly, underground. So, I mean, so just I'm just letting you know. So it could be teleport. It could just be some other form of magic. But all you know is that the, the tribes of gnomes move much faster than you would think they could. And we're not talking about a single gnome. We're talking about the entire tribe. Yes. Yeah. <clears throat> um, Leowen nods and she says, "I again, I will see what we can do. Uh, but for now, uh, am I to understand that we are in agreement of what should be done first? Yes. I I believe so. We let's confer though. That was the drow, right? I thought it was first was the dragon. Yeah, I thought first was the dragon too. First that's was more the dragon. Urgent, plus we'd have dragons, you know, on our side, you know? Yeah. On the way down I would like to stop for the gnomes. Because it is literally in the forest. Uh, sure, and that, that's fine. yeah, and that would be a, a a perfectly viable thing to do. Yeah. So <laughs> gnomes my dragons. Book. G's and double D's. Well, in order to get to the dragons, we're going to apparently pass through Coalhaven, so we're going to usually, while we're on the way, reason. <laughs> it's true. true. I was going to say. Although, although, the gnomes are known for being slippery, they might know a better way to get to the dragons that doesn't involve us crossing a, a, a top demon invaded land, you know? They do have a lot of underpasses. It, it's one of those things where it just kind of needs an opening. So we, we, we could put a pin in the Callhaven thing if we go over land for sure, but... Mm -hmm. But if, like, the gnomes, for some reason, have, like, a whole closet, a path, an type thing? 
Yeah, or just the path of least resistance. Yeah. Uh, so that yeah. itself is a good reason to go visit the gnomes first. Proximity and potential. Well, you're going to have to go to some sort of port no matter where you go because you're not swimming across the ocean. Well, no. Uh, unless, uh, unless, the gnomes, uh, unless the gnomes do have an underground thing yes. to the, the island. Uh, unless they've yeah. dug so far <laughs> down for whatever reason have I this believe one in them. incredible highway that yes. allows mounted transportation that allows us to ride beneath the sea and get to yes. the island. <laughs> yep. I believe it. This is a world of fantasy. Anything can happen. It sounds true. feasible. I, I will say this. Um, gnomes transportation, I I think I at least know this much. It is magical. Whatever it is, it's magical. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we'll I'll leave it at that, I guess. <laughs> You must answer these 17 riddles in order to unlock... No, no. Fuck this! <laughs> take the boat! <laughs> I would Lord rather be killed by a kraken, thank you. <laughs> I would rather try and ride, um... What's his face? Kip? Yeah, Kip. <laughs> oh, God. We could just dangle from him! Anyway, yeah, that, we could just dangle from him! That was a perfectly reasonable explanation from Jack. Like, it was, it was. Oh. That was just funny. I just have an image of all of us just on ropes, just dangling over top of the ocean, being like, well... <laughs> He's the size of a large horse, so at least two people could be on his back, and the other three would have to be strapped to the side, or like, held in the claws, or something. Well, <laughs> that might mind. be a lot of I mean, weight for a dragon. That's about to say, yeah. we're not we're tiny! <laughs> Look, it, it, the dragons are universally known for being incredibly strong and powerful. If he fails, then that's just a failure of the he's, entire dragon race. His <laughs> intelligence already leaves much to be desired. <laughs> that's true. Hey, for being he's super smart, smart. He's just not knowledgeable. There's a difference there. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> is it fair to just assume that maybe we just figure out the details? There is one other thing Pearson wants to bring up. I'd rather be in the group chat because... I don't want the Elf Queen to know about this just yet. Because we oh. haven't played the hand of us being like, yeah, we're the players. Uh, actually, mm. uh, okay, I was waiting for you guys to stop talking uh, or to finish your conversation because um, Lady Celine is going to be very interested to know if you still have the stones. Oh, no, don't, she yeah. doesn't say that, yeah. does she? Why yeah. wouldn't she? Yeah, I, I, <laughs> Can I, I treasure? I, I, Hey, you're gonna shoot! <laughs> <laughs> wait, wait, wait! You're you gonna know what? Okay, okay, okay. I, 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 as a player, was absolutely flabbergasted that you were just continuing to lie to, like, the Elf Queen. Like, not what? only do you. Like, you're trying to, like, make her waste her resources looking for champions when we know where the champions are! <laughs> You worry about that. We'll worry about the champions. We I had no idea where she lay in all this. Well, okay. Course, okay. Well, okay. No, no. Thing is to lie. You were <laughs> testing her sense motive, Jack. Why did you even bring it up? <laughs> let's no. Let's 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 play this out. So, <laughs> Lady Celine. I I give so, up. so so as soon as soon as Lady Celine asked you, it was like. I do believe I still have one keen to you have the other. Wait, wait, I want to shush her, I see. <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, while you're shushing her, that's what Jerry will say. God damn it, Jerry. Lady, Lady Celine will look at Pearson oddly. Well, uh, you, and then she looks at Queen Leia and went, Oh, you mm. didn't tell her. No. Shit. And then Lady, and Queen Leia went, tell, her, tell me what? Uh, well, I, do you want, um, the good news or the bad news? <laughs> Queen Leowin's like, <laughs> preferably both? Okay, well, which would you like first? <laughs> which would you like first? The bad news? Okay, the bad news is... I lied to you a little bit? <laughs> <laughs> now do you want the good news? <laughs> Jarek's not laughing, except for in his mind. He's rubbing his face, going, uh... <laughs> Yes, Colomore, Master Colomore, tell me the bad, the good news. The good news is that I found the players. And the stones are just reasonable. <laughs> and, and, and with that, Leowin looks at you oddly, and then it dawns on her, and then she smiles in a weird way, and then says, Ah. That's why you were approaching the subject so oddly. 
Yes. Well, well my stance our lives. My stance hasn't changed. I'm sure there would be many out there who would point fingers for you at you, but I truly believe that you didn't intend anything. I firmly believe that there's a saying among my people that is rarely remembered, but often or rarely often spoken, but rarely followed. It's easy to be angry. It's difficult to be angry at the right person for the right reasons. I don't think you're the ones that I need to be angry at. Right, and to confirm that, I never used any of the stones. <laughs> oh, fuck you! <laughs> fuck you! Get off your moral high horse, you piece of shit. Alright, anyway. Look, my horse is not eyes. in this room right now. <laughs> that was just through the eyes, right there. That, that Jer- in that case, Jarek will have a gloating look through his eyes. A <laughs> Son of a bitch. Oh, anyway, the smuggest face. <laughs> yeah, uh, whatever. I'm, I don't regret anything. Well, I do regret us being invaded <laughs> by demons. That's a lie. Uh, la- but, lady, okay. lady, lady Celine says my point was the thing I was considering. Azil knows that you are the greatest threat to him. Yes. If our purpose is to project power, then what greater power can there be? than for the greatest threat to his existence to be the one leading the resistance against him. What? Not only are you speaking on my behalf, not only do you have, hopefully, dragons at your disposal, but you're the one group in all of the world that can destroy their master. I can't think of a stronger argument than that. I have one small argument slightly against that, and it brings to a concern since the cat is out of the bag. I might as well lay it at our feet right now. We are Azale's biggest threat, which means he will do everything he can to kill us and ensure his victory. My two daughters are involved in that, and I cannot sit by and wait for them to be killed by some treacherous demon or some traitor working for them in an effort to... uh, completely demolish our power over a zeal. All the more reason, Lady Celine says, <clears throat> to make a fuss. To be as loud as you can so that his eyes are constantly on you and not your daughters. Perhaps, but I know the mind, well, not the entire mind of a demon, but I do know the mind of a wicked people. And sometimes when you can't break the strong, you go after what they care about. To weaken them. Lady Lady Celine nods and she says, I understand your apprehension. I do. But your daughters are as safe here as they are anywhere in the world. Yeah, I know. That's the thing. This is the safest place. And I still don't feel too good about it. But Well, the other alternative is to take them with us to make sure we're all together. And that itself throws them even more into more peril. It's just a hard choice. That's all. The take heart at least in knowing if Azil's eyes are focused on you, he won't see your daughter as a threat. After all, she would have to stand before him and wish the stone to be a threat to him. The chances of your daughter being how to put this delicately have the emotional fortitude to pull off such a feat would be so far beneath him, I would assume, that he would see you as the threat. If you are somewhere else, your daughters should be safe. I know that's a harsh thing to say, but it is the truth. I suppose, yeah. If they are small and insignificant enough, he would only worry about them after he dealt with us. So as long as we don't perish and we stick together, you're right, he might. I don't know. We don't know his mind, but I'll dwell on it a little bit more, discuss with my friends. But... if it is helpful to you, and she looks at Queen Leo and kind of side glance, I can request that your family stay close to me. You may not always like me, but I don't kill easily. That's very true. I'll take your offer into consideration, and I might, I might bring you up on that. Uh, and then she looks at Lady Leo and, is there perhaps a part of the palace that is less grand. Pearson does not like to spoil his children. 
<laughs> the only other thing I have to confer is with Carla as well. They're not just my kids, they're hers as well. Even more so, she brought them into the world. Before you prepare anything in particular, and we worry about pampering my daughters, let me make sure I... Let me make sure... Let us get back to you on exactly what we will do of before course. we depart. And with that, a uh, messenger rushes into the room. My queen, I am so sorry to disturb you, but it's important. And Queen Lewin says, yes. There... Well, there's two reports from the border, ma'am. I'm not quite sure what to make of them. One is a, a, a force of armed uh, White Bridge soldiers uh, claiming to be following the group that came here, and the other uh, apparently uh, have been came, arrived a day ago. An army of orcs, ma'am, 400 strong. My, my queen, sorry, not ma'am, my queen, <coughs> trying to enter the forest. Right now there's a standoff between the elves at the border, and, well... They're not attacking, but we don't know what to do with them. Hot damn. Waga got 400. Waga got here fucking fast. Yeah. We need to fucking consult with him and see what kind of transportation he uses. Holy <laughs> shit. Uh, well, yeah. it's, 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 common, it's, it's common enough knowledge to know that when orcs want to move, they can move, and it's just by running. Almost yeah, nonstop. They just, We're gonna they just fucking run. fight forever. That was <laughs> <laughs> the, the, okay. No the orcs. Is, we all the, pick, we all get an orc. We all piggyback on him. We just <laughs> run up. <laughs> That's where we need to go. The, the go strengths, the, 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 the advantages of, of orcs as an army is their numbers and their speed. So. We shall swim across the sea to fight the, the dragons! Oh yeah. my gosh, if we floated across on a raft of orcs. <laughs> <laughs> yes! <laughs> it's, like an, it's like army <laughs> ants, we, they just like all bind together and then go across water. <laughs> Alright, anyway, I, I love this digression, but we should just finish shit up. <laughs> yeah, so uh, Queen Leowen would, would, would say to, um, to allow them safe passage and and then kind of shake her head and say, it's going to be rather interesting with 400 orcs in the city, but I can't deny that it would make us a stronger position. There's nothing oh, yeah. saying that Azil won't turn his gaze on us if he feels that we are a threat. They're going to so, have to go through the forest, too. Yeah, so, <laughs> she says, orcs in the Sunset Tower, that's new. On the bright side, the High Elves wouldn't be so keen to attack us, she says with a, a bit of mirth. <laughs> it's true. But, what I was thinking, yeah. yeah. But in any case, you all must be tired. By all means, take a day or two to rest and relax and prepare for your journey. Lady Selene, you also need rest, she says a bit sterner than perhaps intended. And, um, and then uh, she says, and Finn, if you would please, I would be delighted if you would join me for dinner. I would actually like to join, um, if you wouldn't mind speaking of tactics. Third wheel! <laughs> uh, Queen Leowen says, I would be happy to speak with tactics with you, Master Cole, another time. Very well. And uh, with that, you guys, unless there's anything else you want to bring up with them, we can go ahead and nope. end the session and say you guys are... We've got a few days to rest and prepare. And <laughs> yes, yeah. rest. Well, good, yeah. Yes, rest. Air quotes. Yeah, <laughs> okay. <laughs> because we know how much Jarek likes his beauty meditations. Yes. No, <laughs> I'm good. The sooner we end the session, the more we can talk about rafts made out of orcs. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. What do you all keep the graveyards and mausoleums here? Oh, <laughs> you see Jarek just burning everything down. <laughs> That's You'll our Jarek! <laughs> You'll be happy to know, Jarek, that wood elf tradition is cremation, not burial. Fantastic. What about high elf? What about what? Look, high elves. I, I oh, am, high elves love uh, grand tombs. Look, I oh, am. They like to hang. Things I am looking things. forward to the high elves siding with the demons and the lich king, and then us just utterly massacring the elves because that <laughs> satisfies a deep-seated desire of mine to kill elves. Wow. <laughs> oh. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I was gonna say I thought the idea was to prevent that from happening, but I see that uh, you've really thought this through. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It started. It started perhaps uh, when I was in the single digits of age. The oh, uh, desire to harm elves. I thought you were going to say, wow. starting when I met this elf named Finn. <laughs> no, no, it was a very long time ago in my life. 
<laughs> All right, we set the stage for killing Mika. Fantastic, I love it. <laughs> Wait, what? When did yep. you do that? <laughs> Jarek laid the foundation in character. It happened in session. <laughs> I don't think we... you did it. You did it, Squee. <laughs> I don't. What? Yep. All right, Mika so... was a topic of conversation because Lady Selene asked about it. Yep, it happened. Jarek that... mentioned his desire in character. Now everyone knows. Yeah, that's true. Yep. I don't think. Yeah, I was gonna say I don't think we came to like any sort of consensus of murder the fairy. <laughs> no, there was no consensus. Guys. But uh, what's up? Really hmm. quickly, are are we ending the session? Yes, Just, we're gonna end the session. Okay, I need to reset my router. So in in case I come back and you guys are still here, I kind of want to talk. Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. I'm gonna stop recording.